The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Paulina Lovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Hello, learners. Welcome to Lesson 8 of your distance learning session for economics. My name is Tapri Godwin Germany. You are from five economics teacher. Before we get to lesson eight itself, we would uh, correct the assignment that we had in the previous lesson, that was lesson seven. The assignment had two parts. A, states one, four benefits of owning a bank account, and two, four characteristics of banks. B, explain four roles played by commercial banks as agents of economic development. For the A part, benefits of owning a bank account. Why is it important that we should have a bank account? First, when you own a bank account, then the insecurity of keeping huge amounts of money is transferred to the bank. So when you have a bank account, you are no longer afraid or insecure as you have money in the bank. Remember, when uh, thieves know that money is in the bank, then the likelihood that they would attack you and make away with the money at home is high. So by transferring that money to the bank, you transfer the insecurity of keeping that money to at home. The second benefit of owning a bank account is that it enables the account holder to benefit from the agency services of the bank. So when you have a bank account, then you could always go to the bank and maybe pick up a loan. When you have a bank account, then you could benefit from the cash dispenser services. So it gives you all those benefits. And so uh, it's very important. Uh, the third benefit of owning a bank account is that it motivates the account holder to save. You don't want your account to remain empty. So once you have an account, each time you have some money you want to save. And of course, saving is very important because it enables you to be able to finance the purchase of those items that cannot be bought with a single month's salary. And uh, finally, uh, owning a bank account enables you to be able to get maybe a bank statement from the bank. So a bank account enables the bank to attest to your credit worthiness, and they do that maybe by issuing you a bank statement. So in brief, owning a bank account is important because they transfer, it trans the insecurity of keeping money at home is transferred because it enables you to benefit from agency services of the bank, where it motivates you to save, and because it, it, it gives the bank a platform to be able to provide you maybe bank statements to attest your credit worthiness. For the deep part, the characteristics of banks, remember we said that banks have general characteristics. First, they deal with money, such as accepting deposits, uh, granting loans, making payments, and so on. And then banks, again, are separate legal entities, meaning that they operate with the certificate of incorporation. Uh, thirdly, banks are profit and service oriented. Their goal is to make profit from the quality of services that they provide, of course, financial services. And of course, they have uh, ever-increasing functions. Their functions keep expanding. 
and uh, finally they are a kind of a connection or connecting link because uh, they are financial intermediaries. For the B part of the question, the roles played by commercial banks as agents of development. So how do banks play or act as agents of development? First, they accept deposits. By accepting deposits, they act as agents of development because they provide a platform where people can save and then to purchase those items that uh, cannot be bought maybe with uh, a single month salary. So that way you are able to save money and then finance a, a, a giant project. Secondly, they grant loans. So by granting loans, they give investment capital to firms and those investments are used to create jobs that goes to develop the economy. Thirdly, they serve as agents of payment. So by serving as agents of payment, they facilitate business transactions. And uh, next, they promote international trade. So by converting currency from one currency to another, they facilitate foreign travel, international trade, and so that develops the economy. And finally, they help in reducing unemployment. Of course, banks employ people of all walks of life. The banks employ drivers, they employ security agents, accountants, bankers, and lawyers, and so on. So their existence in an economy greatly reduces unemployment. And when unemployment reduces, you know, it boosts economic development as well. So our lesson eight is the balance sheet of a commercial bank. The balance sheet of a commercial bank. This lesson will be presented according to the following plan. We we'll have the expected outcome of the lesson, the previous knowledge, the problem situation, the lesson itself, the summary of the lesson, and then we will view some integration exercises and then we will take an assignment. For the expected outcome, at the end of this lesson, learners will be able to identify the various items in the balance sheet of a commercial bank. You'll be able to calculate the cash ratio and liquid asset ratio of banks from the assets or balance sheet of that bank. And finally, you'll be able to reconcile the conflicting objectives of commercial banks to have three expected outcome. For the previous knowledge, already learners can identify commercial banks and can explain their functions in an economy. Problem situation. Your neighbor has a hardware shop. Over the years, he has, been ex the, he has expanded the shop by borrowing money from banks and obtaining supplies on credit. He has also given out loans or goods. He has also given out goods on credit to many customers. He currently wants to sell the shop, but does not know the net worth of the shop. Your neighbor has a hardware shop. Over the years, he has expanded the shop by borrowing money from the bank and obtaining supplies on credit. He has also given out goods on credit to many customers. He currently wants to sell the shop, but does not know the net worth of the shop. What advice will you give to your neighbor to help determine the value of the shop? We just want to say that your neighbor perhaps could get an expert to establish a suitable balance sheet for the shop. But what exactly is a balance sheet? For the commercial bank, a balance sheet is a financial statement that shows all the assets and liabilities of a commercial bank at a particular time. 
So, a balance sheet of a commercial bank, just like any other balance sheet, shows all assets and all liabilities of the bank. Assets are the resources that the bank owns. Assets are the properties of the bank. What the bank actually owns is the bank's asset. So what you own is your asset. And liabilities is what the bank owes. So whatever the bank is keeping, but has the obligation to pay back, is a liability. So if you are keeping anything with you, but it's not yours, and you have to return it, then that is a liability. So the balance sheet of the bank shows all assets and all liabilities of the bank. A typical balance sheet of a commercial bank will look as follows. We have our items or the assets of the bank, and then we have the liabilities of the bank. The items that make up the assets of the bank, we have cash, Balances at the central bank have the amount there. Money at call and short notice, the amount written against. Bills discounted. Investment advances. And then we have uh, special deposits. So those are the assets, what the bank owns. For the liabilities, we have side deposits. Remember what side deposits are? Time deposits, fixed deposits. These are liabilities because the customers will one day come for their money and the bank has to pay back. What is the composition of the assets of the bank? The assets of the bank is composed of liquid assets and illiquid assets. The liquid assets are those that can readily be converted into cash, while the illiquid assets are those that cannot readily be converted into cash. Let us look at liquid assets. First, we have cash. Cash itself is liquidity. So there are the notes and coins in the bank's vault or safe. So that is the first asset of the bank. It does not earn any interest. Remember, the assets of a bank are arranged from the most liquid to the most illiquid. The liquid asset does not earn any, uh, sorry, the cash is a liquid asset and does not earn interest. Other liquid assets may earn very low rates of interest, such as balances at the central bank. The balance at the central bank represents money that commercial banks have kept in their accounts at the central bank. Basically, cash ratio and operational deposits. So these are balances that these commercial banks have kept in their account at the central bank. So these balances perhaps do not earn any interest to the bank, but they are as good as cash. Anytime the bank goes to draw them, it's available. The next liquid asset is money at call and short notice, which are essentially loans that the bank has given to discount houses. It's an asset because the bank can call this money at any time or give a short notification period for the money to be withdrawn. So it's like the bank gives a loan on condition that whenever they need back the money, they ask for it. So that's what they call money at call and short notice, which are essentially loans to discount <coughs> houses. The next asset is bills discounted. These bills discounted are uh, securities convertible into cash within days by discounting. So these are securities like uh, treasury bills, like bills of exchange that has a life of 91 days or three months. So they are liquid assets because they can easily be convertible or converted into cash. And when you look at these liquid assets, they are arranged from the most liquid to the most illiquid. The liquid assets cash no interest, and then the 
illiquid. When liquid acid that is somehow illiquid, it earns some rate of interest, but not as high as illiquid assets. We now turn to illiquid assets. He said illiquid assets are those that cannot readily be converted into cash. The first of them is investment. Investments are long-term securities like shares and ventures bought by the banks. So sometimes banks do invest in securities. These securities they call them investment. Corporate shares, they are owners of shares of companies. Debentures are like loans that uh, they, 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 they obtain or they grant to companies. So they call them investment. They are illiquid assets because they cannot readily be converted into cash. Then we have advances. Advances are long-term loans issued by commercial banks. They are also illiquid. And finally, special deposits. These special deposits are composite deposits called up by the central bank for the purpose of regulating money supply. The special deposits here, they don't earn any interest. The assets that earn the highest rate of interest are the advances. After the advances, the next asset with a high rate of interest are investments. So the rest of the assets are liquid assets. The rate of interest is very, very low, except cash that does not even earn any interest. You should recall that for the balance sheet of the commercial banks, the assets are the, 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 the sum of all the assets should be equal to the sum of all the liabilities. So we add all assets and all liabilities, they should uh, be the same. We now look at cash ratio. The balance sheet of a bank is used or can be used to calculate the cash ratio of that bank. And what is this cash ratio? It is the percentage of total deposit that the bank must hold in cash. So cash ratio is the percentage of total deposit that the bank must hold in cash. How is the cash ratio calculated? It's calculated using a formula. Cash ratio equals cash amount over total assets than 100 over 1. So the next cash ratio will be the R. Cash ratio is amount of cash divided by total assets. And since the sum of all assets must be equal to the sum of all liabilities, we will say cash over total liabilities. So when we multiply this fraction by 100 over 1, we get what is known as cash ratio, which represents the percentage of total deposit that must be kept or that the bank must hold in cash in order to meet any demand for cash by depositors, whether expected or unexpected. We only have the liquid asset ratio which is the percentage of total deposit that is held in the bank as liquid assets. So the liquid asset ratio, we calculate using the formula, liquid asset ratio equals total liquid assets divided by total assets or total liabilities since the sum of all assets must be equal to the sum of all liabilities. Multiply by 100 over 1, we get the liquid asset ratio. Exercise. Given the following assets of a bank cash, 700,000 francs, advances, 9,250,000 francs, investment, 7,500,000 francs, call money, 1,600,000 francs, bills discounted. 950,000 francs. Calculate the cash ratio and the liquid asset ratio. For the solution, recall that cash is 700,000 francs and the value of total assets or the sum of all those assets gives 20,000 francs. So going by the formula, cash over total asset and 100 over one or cash ratio, we now have 700,000 francs which is the cash over 20 million francs, which is the total asset at 100 over 1. That will give us a cash ratio of 3.5%.
So it means that 3.5% of all deposits, all the deposits made in that bank should remain as cash to meet any demand for cash by depositors. For the liquid asset ratio, we have cash, 700,000 francs, call money, 1,600,000 francs, and bills discounted, 950,000 francs. Those are the liquid assets, the sum of which gives 3,250,000 francs. So the value of total assets again, 20 million francs. So going by the formula, sum of liquid assets over total assets times 100 over 1 will give us 3,250,000 francs over 20 million francs times 100 over 1 gives us 16.25%. So it means that 16.25% of the assets of that bank are composed of liquid assets. We look at the objectives of commercial banks. Commercial banks have three main objectives. First, liquidity. This liquidity is the ability to make cash available on demand. So banks must ensure that at any time, there should be enough cash so that any time that a customer comes to withdraw money from his account, the cash should be available. Another objective is profitability. Banks are profit-making institutions. Therefore, they are bound to make profits. This profitability here is the ability to give out much loans and earn profit from the interest charged in return. So, since banks are profit-making institutions, they have to ensure that they give out as much loans as possible so that interest will flow in from those loans, enabling them to make profits. And the third objective there is security. Banks must ensure that loans that are given out from accepted deposits are repaid in time. So no one is situation where a, a bank grants a loan and then the loan is not paid back. If the loan is not paid back, then it means that customers who kept money in their bank or in their account, when they come for money, the bank will not have the money to give. So we now realize that these objectives, they conflict with each other. The objective of profitability, liquidity, security, they tend to conflict. So what are these conflicts between the objectives? First, we have the conflict of liquidity and profitability. The conflict of liquidity and profitability. To achieve liquidity, the bank must hold much cash. But this will reduce the profits since the amount left for lending will be small. So it's that liquidity and profitability are conflicting. If you want liquidity, keep so much cash. When you keep so much cash, then you will be able to give out only a small amount as loan. But when you give only a small amount as loan, then the interest that flows in will be small. You're not be able to make profit. So that is a conflict, profitability and liquidity. But equally, if you want to go in for more profit, then you will give out so much loans, and then the amount remain as liquid will be very small. And the risk is that when customers come for money, they will not have it. So the bank now is faced with dilemma. So that's what we call conflict uh, between objectives. The next conflict there is the conflict of security and profitability. The need for collateral increases security. So if the bank wants security, then it ensures that when the customer comes for loan, the customer must present a collateral. Then security. But since most customers don't have the collateral, it means that uh, they will not be giving out loans. And when they don't give out loans, then profits will not come in. But again, if the banks want to go in for profit and ignore security, then of course, it means that you give out much loans, but the risk of the loans not being repaid will increase, and so security will be compromised. So the security and profitability is the need for collateral increases the security but reduces the ability to borrow, thereby uh, reducing profits. How then can the bank manage this conflict between the objectives? We call that portfolio management. First, the bank should group the assets into liquid assets and illiquid assets. Secondly, it should arrange the assets from most liquid to most illiquid with a relatively small proportion as liquid assets. So group assets into liquid assets and illiquid assets. And then after doing the grouping, you arrange your assets from the most liquid to the most illiquid assets 
while at the same time maintaining a relatively small proportion as liquid assets and a relatively bigger proportion as uh, liquid, sorry, illiquid assets. But thirdly, the bank has to constantly replace assets that are approaching maturity with illiquid assets. That way, a constant flow of liquidity and profitability is guaranteed. That exactly is how the bank, of course, uh, manage its portfolio of assets in order to uh, in order to resolve this conflict between the objectives. By way of summary, remember, a balance sheet is a financial account that shows all the assets and liabilities of a bank. The balance sheet can be used to calculate the required reserve ratio, which is the cash ratio, and the liquid asset ratio of the bank. And remember that the required reserve ratio or the cash ratio is calculated using the formula cash over total assets times 100 over 1. And the liquid asset is calculated uh, using the formula liquid asset ratio is calculated using the formula sum of liquid assets over uh, total assets times 100 over 1. And next, the, the, the balance sheet of the bank is uh, made up of assets and liabilities. The sum of all the assets should be equal to the sum of all the liabilities. And it is designed to achieve the objective of liquidity and profitability. We will now uh, look at this uh, multiple choice questions to test our understanding of the lesson. First question. Which of the following is the most profitable asset of a commercial bank? We have A, balances at the central bank. B, advances. C, investment. And D, special deposits. Recall that the most profitable assets of the bank are advances, term loans. I'm not for advances, term loans. The least profitable is cash. Balances at the central bank is not profitable. Investment is the next profitable asset after uh, advances. Two, a bank's balance sheet shows the following items. Notes and coins, 5 million francs. Money market loans, 10 million francs. Total deposits, 40 million francs. And advances, 25 million francs. What then is the cash ratio of this bank? Of course, the correct answer there is 12.5. Remember that cash ratio is cash over total assets than 100 over 1. Third question. A liquid asset is that which A earns a very high interest rate. B cannot be readily converted into cash without loss in value. C can be readily converted to cash without loss in value. And D, the least profitable asset. The correct answer there is uh, C, can be readily converted to cash without a loss in value. So liquid assets are those that can easily be converted into cash without losing its value. Some examples of liquid assets, we talked of uh, money at call and short notice, we talked of uh, bills discounted, and even uh, short-term investments are uh, examples of uh, liquid assets. Next question. What the bank owes its customers is generally called, what the bank owes its customers is generally called A, liabilities, B, assets, C, current liabilities, and D, current assets. Of course, the correct answer there is A, liabilities, what the bank owes, what the bank is keeping but has the obligation to pay back. So all the bank deposits are liabilities. The side deposits, the time deposits, 
the frozen deposits, they are all liabilities of the bank. We end with this assignment. A. Explain the objectives of commercial banks and show how they conflict with each other. Explain the objectives of commercial banks and show how they conflict with each other. B. Explain how a commercial bank may reconcile its conflicting objectives to achieve liquidity and profitability. Explain how a commercial bank may reconcile its objectives or conflicting objectives to achieve liquidity and profitability. Our next lesson shall be credit creation by commercial banks. Una tege si, ma tege yop, una tege minga, ma tege nyum, una tege majang, ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana, ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina, bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike, Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 